Hello everyone, my name is Notepad Anon, and I write games for fun. So what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be working on a Redux preliminary stream, actually. We're going to be working on one for Project Tactics, which is an oldie about a year ago. Well, actually, a little over a year ago at this point. Uh, we also have a few new updates when it comes to this. We're at the 13th. Now, I would like to thank... Uh, bruh, why do you always have the weird name? Uh, Pipo, uh, Pipo Tavella... Peepo Tavilla? Tavilla? Your new name's gonna be Peepo. Sorry, that's just your name now. But, yeah. Uh, thank you for, uh, pe thank you Peepo for uh, landing me a follow. God, we're at 87 followers now. Oh, God, why do you people watch me? I literally just make shit post content on the internet. So, what is Project Tactics? Well, way back in the day, Project Tactics was a game derived around doing two things. It was a game about leading a force of soldiers to do mercenary things and cool stuff like that. It was very much inspired by games such as Battle Brothers, uh, which I I have a deep affection for Battle Brothers. It, it, it has a nice place in my heart, because I think the game is actually pretty fun, but really unforgiving. God damn it. A uh, little bit based off of Dynasty Warriors. Uh, these games aren't not necessarily nine. My Dynasty Warriors is five. Like, Dynasty Warriors five is my jam arena. Like, I still find it amazing that they're allowed to literally remake the same game 12 times and no one cares. But welcome to Dynasty Warriors. You can do that. Who fucking cares? Uh, then a little bit of, let me see, Mount and Blade, Bannerlord. A little bit of Mount and Blade, Bannerlord. However, the one thing about this game, that's, um, that's something you should really note, is that this game came out in March 30th, 2020. And this game is from, let me actually see, uh, where is it? Error where god damn it every time I need to find this I never Oh god I'm being pinged This game is from way back in April of 2020 So this game kind of officially saw the light of day quite literally like a month after this game officially out like a few days after Bannerlord officially came out and I I've yet to actually play Bannerlord and that's the that's my secret because uh, I don't I don't actually think it can actually run on my computer my, my shit box of a computer but project tactics was an odd duck in a few ways and if you if you were there for those streams uh, this game proved to be a lot meatier than I originally thought. Yeah, we actually have the old way of doing things, otherwise known as, uh, don't even put who it's by, uh, no, no title card or anything. Now, the, the big thing about this game, the, the refining, you could say, gimmick, is that you, the captain, are really damn strong. You're really powerful, you're really, you know, competent, you are someone to be feared, and you are pretty much the apex of what it means to be you. You're not really getting better, necessarily, because you're already kind of top tier. The gimmick is this. Squad compositions. As a captain, you are effectively... You know, you know the captain is composed of their squad. And that's kind of where a lot of the game comes from, is building up your squad of soldiers who follow you around and fight for you. Hence why you're called a captain, part of a company. You're all leading your individual squads around to do insane things. As a captain, you are bigger, you are stronger, you are tougher. But you're also wading into the middle of a combat zone where people are going to do damage to you. You're big, you're scary, they're going to hurt you just as much as you're going to be hurting them. And that was one of the big things I kind of wanted to get across, is that as a, squ as a squad, you know, as a captain, leading your squad is 
kind of spooky. It's kind of big, you're kind of impressive. And it also lets people with high tactic score, pretty much your ability to guide your troops, to have higher squads. You're like, well, why? Why do you want to go do all these things? Oh, no. Well, the idea is you gain stats by having them in your squad. That's the big, big thing. Uh, let me see if I can actually find... <laughs> yeah, this is an old Jesus. It's so old. Why is it so old and so bad? Why is it so old and bad? So, let's see. Yeah, let me find actually some soldiers. Yeah, this took this killed me a little bit. Yeah, they're called troopers. That's what they're called. Now, let's see. Like, the big thing here is, like, your militia squad, the more militia you guys you have, the more strength you're getting. And that allows them to do different things. And it, it was a it was a big game. This game is 95 pages long. Like, this game is not small. And it was just a lot of options. Like, that was the big thing. It was a lot of options that I put in there. Because I felt like, hey, this is important. Like, I, I want more people to, to have what they want. So... As usual, we're going to be going through this game and uh, dying a little on the inside because I have to review everything to make sure that it's good, up to date, and not terrible. And fun fact, it's going to be terrible because this was old notepad and old notepad makes dumb mistakes. So, uh, let's see, system managing... Yeah, tactics over. So one thing I'm going to actually have to do is I'm going to make a, a new preface. I think a new preface is going to be important. And I'm going to put a note here for myself, which is possibly dedicate a, we'll say, desired setting. Because I don't really commit to any one particular setting. Like, there's no setting in this game outside of just there is people who do fantasy stuff occasionally look it's magic everyone clap so i wanted to kind of take an idea and maybe dedicate like a full legit section to it so let's see uh about to play full set of diet in opposition to another character they must perform a check well 1d10 plus attribute plus modifiers attempts to reach target number Jesus, no bad. What were you thinking? One D ten. For no say, defender assume to a one. If there's no defender, then the character with the highest attribute succeeds. Both attributes are the same. The player character succeeds. Fairly simplistic system. This is an old system, like, but it, but it works pretty well. I don't think I really need to change this up too drastically. So, okay, it's characters and squad creation, character and project tactics. cleaning there that's all you can really do sometimes just we need cleaning attributes so a captain has start has has 10 starting attribute points divided among their attributes wow yeah we're we're cleaning you up a little bit cleaning uh cleaning mostly i don't think we're going to be changing much of these like the thing with this project, like, this actual Redux project, is that there isn't going to be much needing to be changed. That's not the point. The point is to that it doesn't need to be having this extensive amount of changes. Because the game is actually not... ...terrible. Like, that was one of the few times I actually wrote something... ...actually decent, and not literally terrible. So, dexterity... yeah... I would say the ones that probably need changing is... Dexterity is going to need changing. Uh, just because these are also your trooper stats and your squad stats. So it's like, oh, okay, maybe that needs some changing. Uh, tactics. I can probably change, you know, change name. Changing name. Tactics works. Like... Uh, 
Like it's it, that's just going to be cleaning, like up here. It's gonna be cleaning strength, cleaning dexterity, making those words sound a little bit better. Captains, combination of two classes to highlight their skills and abilities in the field. These classes from the basis, captain and macro micro macro. Micro and macro combat. Oof. Clean, clean, clean. Uh, each captain has a skill while well, it reflects their ability in the field. Yeah, mm, is this it? This is like has a skill. Okay, we're gonna need to overhaul, overhaul, overhaul the skill system because this is this is a stopgap skill system. I know this already. This is really jank. I need to fix this. So okay, so knights, shining example, chivalric contention, armored warfare in the field. So now you're focused primarily on the field of battle, waging war against your foes. What I'm gonna do probably is mark ones that need wording changes. You're gonna need wording changes. I want the like the knight the knight's gimmick is that the knight charges forward, he's a big meat big slab of meat that just fucks your day up. That's his entire thing. Like that is what the knight is designed to do. He's a big slab of health and he's going to be very annoying once you get stuck in. That's what he wants to do. He can kind of build himself into the more of the heavy armor defender or go down the more cavalry route if he wants. Both are completely valid. Warlord, powerful figure. Warlord is pretty much the barbarian. Magus, uh, ceaseless in arts of magic and the arcane. Uh, neophytes, bolt of energy. Opposing ATU uh, in the squad minus opposing ATU damage on a success. What? Magus Squad suits out a bolt of wild energy at an opposing squad. They roll a attunement uh, pose check and deal 1d10 plus attunement and deal 1d10 plus attunement plus numbers of casting in the squad minus opposing ATU damage on a success. The 1d10 minus opposing ATU damage on a failure. That needs some word wording, wording chain no wording. Because the idea here was what I think what I was trying to do was it's whatever your attunement is plus the number of actual casters minus whatever the you know enemy attunement. If you succeed, however, if you fail, it's just one d ten. Like it's. Like 1d10 plus attunement plus number of casters. So if I have, let's say I have an attunement of four in my, let's say an attunement of six in my squad, and I have three casters minus their attunement of, let's say, four, I'm going to be dealing, uh, let's see, it'd be one, one, uh, 10 to 10, 16, one, 10 to 19 damage. However, if I fail, you know, they managed to beat me. I'm only going to be doing 1d10 minus 3 damage, which is going to be 0 to 7 damage. Okay, that works. I need to clean up the wording there. Bishop, an individual of the cloth. Bishop is wholly individual, able to guide and inspire their soldiers to great heights and inspire inspiring war, fiery rhetoric. And blessings from on high to bring the troops forth in battle. Uh, is benediction of the masses using divine power to physically heal the squatterers and morale boost. That's one of the things that's like it's kind of a a 50-50 depending on how you interpret it. Because what how health is kind of distributed is that if I take 20 damage to my squad, I can put it on my captain or I can distribute it to my squad mates. So it's like we're all taking a little bit of damage or one person's taking a lot of damage. 
So I think it would mostly be like physically healing, but morale is definitely a part of it. Kind of. That's one of those things like I need to kind of commit a little bit more to certain aspects with this game. Though the the bishop is weird, is his his trees can either go down this really heavy crusader route, where they're like he just buffs his troops up to be stupid. Or he goes down a really hardcore Healy route, or kind of some like weird hybrid routes. Like he's an odd duck. Mostly, if you become like a bishop knight, you can be stupid. Like you get you, you get dumb because two class combination two classes. Because yeah, you get two of these classes at once. Like, which I'm gonna have to reword that a little bit. And let's see, knave. Shadowy Straits, Glittering Halls, Knave of the Scoundrel Fiend. Rogue, Fighting Dirty. I can probably... Uh, slight rewording. Yeah, Ranger was the one that kind of got a little bit fucked. Because they're kind of just like, we need, a, I need another one. Oh, no. Yeah, that was the, that was kind of the intent. It was the idea that as a bishop with the skill of medicine, you have medical knowledge. So when you're not strictly in a battlefield, you can be like, aha, I am a doctor, doctor mage. I'm going to heal you because you are bleeding to death and I... I know I can identify this disease. I need to rehaul the overhaul the entire skill system at this point. Because the skill system just doesn't... It was a stopgap method to make sure that characters don't feel similar. Skills need an overhaul, and I don't quite know how I want to do that yet. I don't even remember the skill system. Oh god, why am I the way that I am? Uh, let's see, volley fire. Let's have two volleys. Vero attacking at range twice... Yeah, I was actually in the note here. Uh, I was debating on adding, like, maybe add a another class, another class or two. Like, maybe just something additional. I don't know what I would add because I think I'd have like a pretty good assortment of classes of like various archetypes. But maybe adding something a little bit more fun would be appropriate. I don't know. So, squad composition. Individuals who follow them and are willing to die by their side. Captain squad. Group of individuals. Fix. Wording. Note. Bad. Why? Uh -huh. uh, starts, uh, Captain starts with five soldiers in their squad. In their squad of all of trooper... Uh, in their squad from troopers from their, their classes. Not their from starting unit. They... Yeah, the wording. Yeah, the wording here is really fucked. So the captains drive the initial squad from starting units available to them. Two of them being from their class as well as a peon unit, which contributes nothing but can be upgraded into any other class's starting unit. Peons, yeah, we love peons. Let's see, uh, Knight Ranger, the King of the Greater Bermany. Three militia, two poachers. His endurance and outdoorsman skill, as well as shield, wound, volley, fire. People die. People. Wording, note, wording, note, pad. God, why am I the way that I am? Uh, health pool of 10 times their toughness plus 5 times 5. Ooh. That's, whoa, that's really high. There's a reason for that. Toughness times five. If you have, well, let's well, let's think about it. If I have a toughness of four, 
that means I have 30 HP. So if I were to power game it, I get a toughness of 7. That would be 55 HP. I mean, that's still a little high. That is a lot. That is pretty damn high. Uh, character zero cannot go lower. Consider critical state. Captain Trooper has zero health. They are in critical condition. They'll need to be carried out of the fight and left. Conscious for rest. A uh, trooper in the critical condition does not contribute to the squad's overall ability. Their attributes are taken away from the squad's total. Trooper has their tier to has their okay. That's a weird wording. Has their tier to recover in rounds before they bleed to death. Uh, wording fix. Let's see. If a captain falls in in combat, their troops will attempt to evacuate their captain right away. Well, the fight to protect their pap no longer receive maneuvers or orders. The captain has toughness times two rounds to evacuated, or they will bleed out. Currently, if their squad is destroyed, they will be perished or be captured. Yeah, no, they're the same thing. That what usually you got to remember what usually happens here is that I write it, but then I, like, later on, it's, like, four hours later and 50 pages in, I'm like, okay, it's critical state, and then I'm like, oh, well, I gotta go back to this one and change that, but then I forget another one here. And so it ends up in these, like, very odd situations where draft one is one way, draft two is another way, then draft three, which is supposed to fix draft two, for draft draft one to match to draft two ends up being completely different. That is going to be a, something I have to go through and just fix. Uh, to, like actually, I shall. I'll probably stick with critical condition because I think that gets across the idea a little bit more. Falls in combat, true like, true like troops are going to be a big one too because I call them soldiers, troops, and troopers, and I'm going to have to kind of formally call them troopers because soldiers is actually a class of soldier, a class of a soldier is a kind of trooper that the knights get. Yeah, it's. It's never like these little, it's always little things, it's always little terms, and I usually rant against people who do this in some games. It's, I, I call it capital word syndrome. It's like where they put in a bunch of terms without really explaining them. I do it sometimes too. I've been getting better about it though. Like I usually like to double check myself and being like, this is what this means, this is what this means. But sometimes it's just hard to double check something, mostly when it's something like this. Like this, again, this is 95 fucking pages. Uh, they will fight to protect their captain, evacuate, bleed out. Half out their original health, they will suffer if a squad ever falls below half their health. for morale check, forcing a very hard tactic to reorganize. If they fail, the squad does not act for the turn. In order to make that, uh, the next turn, they make a hard tactics roll and so on. If a squad is forced to retreat during a morale check, they are considered routed and do not reform. Yeah, so right here. Like if you were to retreat or you you fall in combat personally, you start to the panic. That's where morale comes in. Sounds okay, it's captain's fighting, D10 plus dex and chart initiative value. This is really bog standard. Like, this is really... St actually, uh, we gotta update space distance. Update space distance. It's two Grug space distance. Two Grugs SD. And add in. Actually... Fuck it. Commit... Commit to hex... Co commit to hex combat. I think that'll be the right choice here. 
yeah, I think committing this strictly to hex combat would be best, not some of these, like, SD to grids. I don't think SD works for this game, unfortunately. Elemental attacks. Yep, this was during the elemental attack phase. My, my friend made this chart for me, so I'm like, I have to use this for everything. Or for a conflict. I want to engage other warbands and feel this. Paramount these soldiers fighting to their best ability. An unorganized force a little more than a target to a stronger one. Wording. Fix wording. Notepad. Je Notepad. Jesus fuck. Jesus fuck. Uh, when warbands clash, each captain rolls 1d10 plus their squad's deaths to determine their initial initiative. And from there... From there, from there, in, and from there, in ascending order, the captains place their units on the battlefield in their respective areas of choice. Then, when the battle begins, the order initiated by turn by ascending order. Because the idea here, the method to the madness here, was that you are placing down, you're placing down, everyone's placing their squads down, like where they actually are on the battlefield. And then you can kind of determine where things are if they're moving a bit slower with the idea of like, you've entered the battlefield first and you can kind of reposition yourself a little bit better than them. So it's like, okay, I've put my guy in like, oh, I'm last. So I have to put down my squad here, but then everyone can obviously see that I'm exposed or something or, uh, well, I've got this really cool, awesome position, but now everyone can just move around me. Actually, I should add in... Uh, Options, maybe? Options, question mark? Kind of the, like, do you want to deploy first or do you want to deploy last? Because that could be... That's actually a pretty big idea. Let's get... Uh, Warbane count... Deployment. Regardless of initiative rule, a rough show conflict. If the opposing warbands intermingle, each side deploys their other squads. Each side deploys the other squads however they please. This is for a very... Uh, actually, what I should do is uh, add more. I think adding a, like one or two more of these would be fun. This is exclusively from a single situation in Battle Brothers that can occur. Is that like you're you're making camp with a bunch of people, but it's like, haha, secretly they're like trying to kill you. So you erupt into conflict. Everyone's just drawing blades and trying to stab one another. It's a really cool moment. It sucks, but it's cool. A general order to the scholars attempt a tactic or issue a maneuver. Orders. Or the squad will carry it out. It's either cancelled or overridden. Those on the offensive attacks another squad within range. The squad becomes engaged with another squad and makes an OC strength check. The winner of the assault deals this and the loser deals that. Because so we have retaliation damage, yeah. We have retaliation damage. Like, one thing to note, too, is that each... Tactics scouting skill to choose the special deployment that you want on a success. There isn't. That's actually not a bad idea. Give me one second. I can, uh... Maybe something like a scout check. Maybe, like, scout check. That wouldn't be a... That wouldn't be a terrible idea, actually. Like... One of the things is I was kind of modeling it off of my time with uh, Mountain Blade and some of the more situations from like Dynasty Warriors, which was either the battle has already been kind of determined, like how this is going to go out, or it's like we're forming up on either side and we're just going to charge at one another, which is kind of the messy part of this game and why I need it. Maybe committing to like a stronger theme would be good. Like, a, a more dedicated, like, yes, why are people fighting in warbands? Because this is probably the best, you know, situation available. And so, yeah, that's actually not a, not a bad idea to add in. But thank you for pointing that out. So, let's see. Uh, range strike. Aims when we shall volley attacks on an opposing squad. They make an opposed dexterous toughness check. Because a lot of this is, looks like it's opposed checks. So, do I have a D10 on me? Do I not have a D10 on me? 
And let's consult my, my let's consult my big bag of dice. It's always nice to have some dice on you anytime you're you're doing these things. Uh, where's my damn D10? And that's a one that's one D10. I have a bunch of D12s. You never need D12s, kids. Remember that. I should make a game just based off D12s, just because they're the most underappreciated dice in this entire thing. D12s and D8s, those are usually the ones I like rarely use for anything. Okay, I don't need any of you. I have to clean some of my dice though. Okay, there we go. Put this away. I also got a fudge dice. See, I was one of those people who, like, my guys back in, when I was back in the Midwest, like, we, like, getting dice was hard, like, good dice. So I ordered these huge bags of dice. And those huge bags of dice, fun fact, are usually uh, reject dice. They're dice that either, like, a, like, one part of them got fucked up, so they couldn't bundle it together, or, like, it's a D10 that like they're messed up or they have some like damage to them or something they put them all together i got a fudge dice from one for fudge it's the one with the plus plus minus minus on it um it just doesn't have anything on it. it's literally just a pure white dice it, there's nothing on it i occasionally roll it every now and again when i'm playing online with my players just to fuck with them because i'm an evil gm <laughs> I'm evil. So let's see. I uh, wonder if the assault deals. So, oh, strength check. Deals 1d10 plus strength weapon. Okay, that's that's relatively simple now. I could do it. Or smart, dedicated move to a location. Maybe plus 3 units per round, race or destination. Do we just get a free movement? Do you get free movement, or do you just... Don't. What? No, pad. <laughs> I think I forgot to add movement. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a few weird, like, I have a D30, actually. Let me see if I can bring up my... Like, my weirdest dice I have is my D30. And my, I have a D60 and a D30. Like, those are my, those are my darling boys. Uh, the D60 is hilarious because there's a sphere. Like, it, like, I can I can hardly roll it, because if I roll it, there's, like, a 50% chance it is going to flee my desk. Like, because it is just a pure sphere. So it does make for good rolling. So if you spin it... One day I should show off. I should just take a picture of all my, my, my dice collection, just so you can all make fun of me. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, hold fast. Two plus two defend against any attack against them. Refocus. Yeah, retreat is actually a really valuable move for things like cavalry. Like, especially like heavy, heavy cavalry or really light cavalry, you trigger retreat, you run away, you reform, they can't target you at all. You pretty much take away your squad and you re put it on there by because you just scatter. Like, you charge in, you burst them up, and you scatter real fast. Like, that's what if you want to do like a hardcore cavalry build, you use retreat often. You need to kind of heal yourself more actively, but. Tactics as an advanced order that can you should have a squad form specific action at a location that can lead to other order 
leading to other orders or assistant actions performed by the squad. Charge and launches into a charge against the enemy. Moving a set of units turned by the squad's deck score. At the end of the charge, the unit doubles their strength for their melee assault. Issue the challenge to the opposing captain. If they accept, they must fight one another in rounds if they were in a skirmish situation. Yeah, dueling is actually a really powerful move, which I think I should probably... Do I want to focus on this a little bit? Uh, maybe focus? Question mark? Hello, phone. Whoop. What do you need, Feld? What is what secrets do you hold for me? Oh. Maybe <laughs> yeah, there should be a mechanic to punish retreats available to suitable troops like light cavalry. Uh some people do get that. Like some people some specific soldiers are designed to fuck you up when you try to retreat, especially cavalry. If you are a cavalry squad and you charge into a, like, if you were to deliberately charge into a unit of spearmen, you take triple, I think it's triple damage, which is really bad. <laughs> Like that will didn't that will annihilate you if you are not careful. Even if you retreat, you're not doing much. There's a chance you might break immediately, and if you break immediately, you retreat. Like you're you're just routed. So if like uh, yeah, I might actually add something like that. Kind of like the idea of like if you're trying to retreat from like like cavalry or something like that they can hunt you down or give you a, some more bonuses i don't have to think about that focus assault specifically targets a member of an enemy squad on the next attack all damages focus on that single member of the squad this is a very important one because when it comes to big damage i like to have the ability that the player doesn't the player chooses where the damage goes you are dedicating that damage to different people and it also it also impacts the idea that let's say you have three mem uh, three troopers in your squad one has armor one has armor 4 actually we'll say t1 has armor 4 t t2 has armor 2 and t3 has armor 0 and let's say you take 10 damage so what you can do is you can assign six damage to this person, two damage to this person, and two damage to this person. This person at the end, you know, at the end, what occurs is they're just gonna take two damage because poor armor block. These guys take zero damage, and he takes only two damage. So you kind of like heavier armored squads, you want to kind of focus that on like here is here is a guy who's a meat stick. He doesn't do much damage. He's not actually that useful, but he just eats damage. And there's, I know there is actually one specific line of doing it with the bishops who, if they go down that particular line with certain squad mates, the idea is that their troopers, you want to kill them. Because every time you kill one, or every time you pretty much burn a, a guy, they're going to get stronger. Everyone else gets tougher. Okay, fighting retreats. Uh, squad makes a dedicated effort to fall back, moving dex minus one units away. Uh, uh, making a melee assault on the enemy. If they fail a melee assault, the squad does not move. Yeah, the fail screens for... Uh, Battle Brothers are always really sad. I always feel sad when I see them. And I see them a lot, unfortunately. Uh, Captain, once around, they issue a maneuver to their squad's turn. These maneuvers are required after we check with the squad to determine if it's successful in the field. Some maneuvers require certain conditions to be met, such as being distant from the opponent, have a certain unit type present, or having a clear line of sight. Unprepared. If they attack, they not reduce damage by their toughness. Horrified. Let's overcome with terrible dread. Last stand readies itself and enters a desperate last stand. 
Now we can add, we can probably add some more conditions. More conditions, more, more. This is what I try to do with these. Like I like to add in just more equal to dex plus one. Then I remember this being an issue right here. That dex plus one was always an issue because you can have really low dex, so you always are going to be. I want to give you at least one, so I might give you uh, maybe fix question mark. <laughs> And then this is you like a lot of these are we've seen like this map has actually been used in a lot of games that we've done on this channel like a lot of them simply because they are I did it once and I'm like it's it's good I like it it'll, it'll work I might I might draft up a new one a veteran scene heroics destroying the squad reaching the squads engaged routing the squads. Yeah, like, troopers gain experience, but they're actually a lot easier to level up than your captain. Let's see, because, yeah, it's like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Starting maneuver and units available to them. Each advancement in the class gives captain option of selecting uh, one of two doctrines. So yeah, you can you have to individually do both of your classes. That's how it goes. It's a little bit weird. We can actually uh clarification clarifications. And that's so this is mind you, this is where things get a little bit odd because this is what killed me when I was doing this original like back in the day. Like right here, things like docked, like I had, cause I had to do each of these individually and most of these shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to have to go through them and check every single one of them, but it shouldn't be bad. Like it shouldn't be like, I am going to be un impossible to do this. Like it shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, the warlord. Hmm. Oh yeah, I named everything after vaguely Latin because I hated myself. <laughs> yeah, this if you ever want if you ever want to do something completely bullshit, you do this. Um Bellator Martyrs, which Anytime you enter critical state, you just fucking kill one of them. Like, oh no, my my boy is is dead and he he's not gonna make it. What what we do? Die. You die and you kill them. It doesn't matter either, too. So it's like, yeah, here's some fucking peon that I can use to instead kill people with. Uh, screw, uh, service and faith completely ignore damage from one source this round. The nay, blood in, blood out. Look at that, a close gear. <laughs> mm. Once again, I need to formalize the this formalize this system make it a bit clear and then easy and easier to use this is like one of those issues with the fact that I the game was so broad that I needed to account for everything but I needed to kind of squish it down 
them. Like, I want you to have everything, but I also want to make sure that you only have a certain amount of options available. <laughs> In a very dull way, so I think giving this its full section might be good. I give it a little bit more like, hey, you've leveled up. Instead of taking one of these, you can let's make your own. That kind of does the same thing. Trooper advancement, yeah, tier one, tier two, like tier zero. Oh, yeah, peons. Yeah. I want to just emphasize this real fast. Doing this, see this section right here, all of these, was awful. <laughs> This is, like, one of the major reasons I haven't really, like, wanted to go back to Project Tactics for so long. Was because I damn well knew I was going to have to do these again. And, uh, luckily I have a better way of doing them now. But it's just, ugh. Yeah, let's see, I just want to... Yeah, so you can either, from the militia, you can go down the infantry route, which is all about, you know, more foot, or you can go down the cavalry route, which is, from there, go down the lancer route to be a lot a lot faster, or to go down the heavy, the knight errant route to have a lot of really heavy. Great shields, yeah. You never realize how much weird Eastern Europe like eat. Like, Eastern Roman influence you put until it's, like, the Praetorians, the, like, Greek influence, cataphracts. That could work. That wouldn't be probably the worst idea. But then you have things like here, which are, like, have nothing. BRB, let me just die a little on the inside as I realize I spelt gorilla like that. Oh, God. Notepad. Oh, God. It's not even... This isn't even a word. It's not even like gorilla warfare. <laughs> God, why am I the way that I am? Did I spell it right down here? Now, this is, this is where things get... This is where things get amusing. Did I spell... Spell it right. Yeah, I spelled it right. God fucking damn it, me. Two's on horses with swords. It's this is Project Tactics Flag Bearer, and Project Tactics Flag Bearer is a game about w being part of a war band sized group of soldiers as you fight for coin and profit, with the gimmick being. All the player characters are captains. They are captains of this small fort of this war band, and they are all guiding their particular squads around the battlefield to fight and do things like that. Rather than being like, I'm a you know shining hero with a sword and I'm gonna fight evil, it's me and five of my guys are gonna rush up to a you know a bunch of people and we're going to stab them to death because I have soldiers and you don't. It's was partially, mostly inspired by things like Bannerlord, actually Mountain Blade more particular. Uh, inspired by Battle Brothers was a big one. By sheer technicality, um, Dynasty Warriors was a big, big influence on this. And... It, <laughs> They're like I wanted to make the characters feel a little bit bigger, and like the idea is that like all of you are 
It's like, yeah, you can have a bunch of gladiators follow you around. Gladiators kind of suck, by the way. But they, the gladiators go into becoming some of the best troops in the game, actually. Uh, I.e. Berserkers. <laughs> because they can just do a shit ton of damage really fast and rip squads apart. Or you get things like bear killers, which that's the entire idea. Yeah, good old horse archers, because we all love horse archers, yay! Magus troops, yeah, this was... Yeah, you can, you, like... <laughs> You can tell where the inspiration for the names dried up quickly. <laughs> yes, shielding mage, illusionist mage, shielding scholar. <laughs> so that's going to be that's going to be kind of odd to to deal with. So I'll I'll have to I'll have to fix that up. I'm like actually, that reminds me, I'm gonna. Naming no naming Mr. Notepad. God damn it. Mm. Yeah, and then you get things like the explosion wizard, which can just annihilate things. You're dealing 40 10 damage to those at the epicenter, 2d damage away. Explosion Wizard goes into critical condition, however. You get the reference? Yeah. Bishop troops. So, yeah. Finding... Finding a good name for this, the Sohei, you see that right there. That one was complicated because there isn't really a good word for, like... Just a holy soldier doing holy soldier things that isn't already covered somewhere. Like, I couldn't really find a good way of, like, I thought of, like, Pilgrim, maybe? But Pilgrim didn't sound right. So, they got called Sohez, <laughs> which will probably get changed. But... Oh yeah, flagellants actually can become redeemed if they want. But there's also broken ones, which are really... S Knight Templars kind of are like Crusaders, that's what, th that's what they are. Uh, yeah, Battle Pilgrims would probably be a good one, but it was like, how do I fit all of this in, like, one easy-to-do where, like, there was, probably I'll go with Battle, Battle Pilgrims isn't a bad one, actually. Like, that's, like, the only one that kind of sticks out to be a little bit weird. Uh, let's see. But the Bishop was weird to deal with. Then... <laughs> This was another one that was kind of odd, because gangster was the only word I could really think of. But these, like the, but the knaves get a lot of weird ones. And as you can tell, I stole names uh, liberally, liberally li lifted names from Warhammer. If you haven't noticed yet, hence why we have things like these throw. Uh, D star on the protagonist, which I still find to be hilarious. Uh, you get the moss trooper. We can probably uh, rejigger re -jigger the names. But most of these are pretty simple. But these guys are supposed to be like, yeah, they get things like moss troopers and bandits. Like, bandits are actually really good, because they can just really, you know, bungle up. Uh, let me see, actually. Uh, 
and protagonists are they're they're pretty much just how like it was a wording thing in Germany but like they're you know some protagonists live by code only take jobs that it permits most however can only care for money they're pretty much yeah they're the the way that they are are professional bullies they beat people up they do stuff for for money They're pretty much like advanced gangsters, and that's the best way to kind of word it. I always liked the term for it. It always gave them kind of a, an odd way of looking at things. Marauders, brigands, cavaliers, distros. Yeah, brutes can be, like, brutes are really damn good because they can eat damage. Like, if you want to go down that particular route with the knave, like, if you go down this, the thug route with the knave, you can do, like, you eat damage, like, professionally. It's eat damage, like, eat damage over here. Do damage pretty well. Be a little bit more consistent with your damage, but usually have more effects. Just have more options. Because bandits are like, bandits allow you to do stuff like this, and. Yeah, they get things like brigands. This is like their only cavalry thing, too, if I remember correctly. What, yeah. The Marauder is their only cavalry that they get. And then we have ranger troopers, uh, which is pretty... Rangers do become druids. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, yes, the, the Zweihander review. <laughs> uh, I'm... I'm debating on... Um, actually, let me just break my back a little bit here. Ooh, that feels good. I've been debating on doing something similar for Lancer, just because, like, I have nothing to say on Lancer. Like, that's my biggest issue, because the, the answer to Lancer is, the game is f good. Like, uh, like, looking at it, everything about it's good, I don't like it, though. And the reason is, it's not the way, I, it's not the kind of mech game I want. Like, it is perfectly good, so I'm like... Maybe I should do like, oh, it's Lancer, but then like transition to doing something completely different. What that different is, I don't know yet. If I wanted to be mean, if I wanted to be like really, really mean, it would be like Shadow of the Demon Lord <laughs> or something. This would be like, psych, it's Shadow of the Demon Lord. Or do the entire thing like I'm talking about Lancer, but then just reveal at the end. Yeah, so I like Shadow of the Demon Lord. Yeah, like Lancer's inspired by it too, so I th that that's a few ideas. These guys were the weird ones because I didn't know what to do for their fourth one, so they ended up becoming druids. Uh, why druids? Mm -hmm. yeah, I I actually wish more games would do the Warhammer Fantasy profession system. I really do, but I understand why it's not done that way. Captain weapons. Ranged weapons. Yeah, th these are taken almost one for one for a lot of other things. We might I might do a little bit more working around here. I don't know though. Trooper equipment. Oh jeez. Advanced one. Oh, what the hell is this? What? What is? Oh, uh, during a focus session, to not contribute their attribute to the round. Oh no. Yeah, we got armor and shield, bonus health, damage resistance, bonus health. Uh, 
And the, I remember doing these ones. This was literally me like going through and like converting everything over to like what what they would look like in skirmish mode. I have to remember the calculation I had for this. Like overall, I think I have like a decent like setup like here of, of options. I don't think I really need much more in that, in that idea. Uh, opposing captains and squads. Having one, there's a war to be fun, glory to be won by the blade. Basic captains pose a single class with troopers based around it solely. More advanced opponents may possess two classes. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So, Bandit Lord Lorem is Lackey. Ulm are both of the men are dangerous individuals hunting the woodlands of the south. Both of sword Joffrey and Co. to hunt them down. The Bandit Lord Lorem, veteran knave warlord, is a seasoned bishop. Okay, as for the math, all trooper tier enemies have health calculation of 5 times 3 times toughness with a minimum of 0 health and negative toughness score both beasts. Okay. And we have all the extended rules. So, uh, for extended rules, we'll probably add more rules, but, but maybe integrate. Because while this may be fantasy i didn't i didn't really add in things like hey i want to be elf captain man i didn't really add any of those fantasy races or anything like that outside of here because i just didn't think those were um important hence why i also have kenshi races <laughs> why do i have kenshi races you may ask because i was playing a shit ton of kenshi during this time why do i have banga and viera here because i was I really like Final Fantasy Tactics. That's the reason. <laughs> so, this is one of those ideas of like, I need to commit to things, maybe, perhaps. Maybe getting a full setting wouldn't be totally remiss, but how the other half of me is like, eh. I wish to could be brand new troopers, not present, do not have rough equivalency. Feel free to make new ones. Tactics often augment already useful orders or tactics available. The numerous range from T and 1420, ranging difficulty and value. Generally speaking, the higher tier the troop is, the higher value equipment and valuables they may equip. Yeah. Hence why we have an entire section of dwarves from... Yeah, dwarves and Shek. Because I, I like... I like dwarves and I like Shek. That's one of those things that always, like, amazes me, that no one's really tried to do a Kenshi tabletop game. People, actually, I take that back. I know people have tried, but no one really gets that far in them. Or they're like, did you use Song of Swords? I'm like, that's not actually, I don't think Song of Swords is the right option for Kenshi. Some part of me says that isn't the right choice. I can't put my finger on why it isn't. I just know it isn't. But, you know, it looks like... Gun uh, fights at full strength till they are killed or rendered in the critical state. Yeah, pretty much Shek Guardians cannot die. Yeah, they had big troopers on the squad because I thought that was cool to put in big troopers. And then we have me. Okay. So, roughly looking at things, like just sheer things to do, the main thing is what we have to worry about in this game. Like just looking at things from a completely objective point of view. Act 
correctly and making sure all the little bits and pieces work. Uh, we're going to be harmonizing the assume setting. And again, that's going to come down to mostly wording. Getting rid of so hey, getting rid of the terms gangster, kind of making it so everything adds up a little bit better into kind of what the setting looks like. Uh, which kind of doubles for the fact that maybe we want to... I also notice I've been muted this entire time. I don't know how long I've been muted, but uh, I'm a fucking idiot. Is that nine? Does nine literally mute me? That's not good. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, we gotta fix all these things. I don't know if I wanna actually add a setting or not. I really don't. Um. Maybe add a maybe add a new class. I really don't know what archetype is that isn't really covered because we have the knight. Like just by default, knight is more defensive fighter. The warlord is more offensive fighter. The magus is is offensive is offensive caster. I can actually spell. The bishop is defensive caster. The ranger is... You know, the ranger actually would be... The knave is offensive. It is offensive util. Actually, it would be... Ranger is offensive utility. Then the knave... Is defensive utility. Like, what else do you add to this kind of, like, assortment? Unless you commit to, like, a more fantastic, fantastic setting. Because if you commit to a specific setting, you can be like, oh, well, in this Byzantine-inspired setting, like, I have my classes, you know, the Praetorian or whatever, or, like, some, or, like, um, um... Well, not, not necessarily like a demigod, but like like a hero or something. Like if there's like a specific setting, you can maybe move a little bit more with it. But like, I don't really know what kind of setting I would want, so I don't really know what to add there. If if I were to do anything really, it would be maybe like a sacrificial, like more of like um not necessarily like a summoner, but more of a like. It's going to sound bad, it's like slave driver even. Just the idea of that you are actively throwing your own troops away in exchange to make you more powerful. But that seems like a really big weird gimmick. I don't really know how I would want to do that. So the only other like major, major spooky, scary, oh god, oh fuck thing I really need to work on is fixing up all uh, you know fixing up all actually fixing up the tables and like maybe adding some adding some new um add all situations but really there isn't that much to do so i might actually throw up a I, not a poll necessarily but kind of like a a what you what's what y'all looking for in the in the main discord and if people want something really in particular tell me throw it in the drinking lounge and it's right now it's kind of in that weird spot where it's going to probably this is not going to be a long project by any stretch of the imagination and judging by what's been going on notably i've been contacted by someone to do a commission project for them 
this may, this particular Redux project may be, I wouldn't say regulated to, but kind of converted into not necessarily like a weekend weekend warrior project, but kind of like a side thing. Like I work on that big commission project while also working on this, kind of uh, double it up. Maybe even do a Tuesday, Thursday stream for this game and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday normally for the major commission project. That could work. I might do that, honestly. If I it'd be a lot of work, but I think it I think it'd work out pretty smoothly. Overall, probably guesstimating like two, maybe three episodes, but there won't be like long episodes. It'll be about as long as this, about maybe like an hour and a half per at most. And that that's suggesting like the it'd be an hour, hour and a half at most if I am literally talking a lot during it. If I'm getting distracted, I'm having kind of diatribes and other things. If I'm doing that, then yeah, it'd be about an hour and a half. But like if I were just like raw go through everything, I don't think it'll be that long. Which I may do that. I might do that. I think that'd be a good idea actually. Yeah, all right. That just means I gotta make all the fucking tables. Ah, why do I keep making tables? No, Pat, why do you do this to yourself? I think probably the most extensive thing that's gonna be needed in fixing is some of the captain aspects just to make them feel a lot more imposing. Make them feel like, oh god, you're you're a big scary son of a bitch and you're a, you are a terrifying entity to deal with. But that's kind of the extent of that. So I think I'm feel I'm feeling good about this one. I don't think it's gonna be like an extensive scary thing to go over. I think it's just gonna take time. Time is fine. Like I got all the time in the world. Um outside of that. Uh we're doing pretty solid. We are the things Notepad add on wants to do. With this commission project coming up and what they've been kind of talking to me about it, I've been working with them a little bit on it today. I am, it's going to be a long one. I know, I kind of know that for a fact. So, most likely, like, What'll probably happen is when this one, like when Project Tactics Flag Bearer ends, which won't be too long, I'll start, I'll put up the poll for the next one. So if people on the Patreon are there, don't forget you get your bonuses. You you get the the preferred package, you could say, you know, the preferred everything. Uh, the main games that are probably going to go on the next poll is we're going to see Aces. Aces up. Um, I've been wanting to do aces. I'm pretty confident in it. I know how it's going to work. It's going to be effectively the Arma RPG with all the associated autism that goes into it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sparkle Hearts keeps going back and forth on what I want to do with it. Like I'm like, I'm going to do it. And then it's like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep it as a weekend project. I don't know. So I'm, I might not add it. I might. Who knows? So, uh, whatever this is, I don't know what I want to call it yet, but we're just going to call it the, you know, the riverboat, the riverboat RPG. That's going to, actually, we should say is uh, the Hulpy riverboat RPG. Uh, I should ask, if there's any Europeans, tell me about your pulp. Give me, give me ideas, give me concepts. I'm going to actually probably ask after this, like, just, like, give me ideas. Because it's going to be things like, it's going to be directly inspired by things like Corto Maltese. It's going to be inspired by things like Tintin and the Italian DuckTales. Which is, I think it's probably going to be something, I'm, I'm going to call it Pulp Earth as the setting. 
Those two-fisted tales about fighting the Nazis or fighting something else that is vaguely evil at this time and going to wild and mysterious places that are definitely not racist characters. Don't question it. Tintin went to the Congo and it was fine. Everything was good in the Congo. Belgian Congo. Don't question it. Uh, Helljumpers is going to go in there. This name's going to change, mind you. Helljumpers is just kind of a placeholder name. Uh, mostly because I want to see, like, how do you do horde mode RPG? Like, how do you do a game with explicitly many, many, many enemies versus small player numbers and, you know, make it satisfying to do? I know the Starship Troopers RPG does it, uh, which is on my list to actually look over. That Like, that's one big thing. It's, uh, it's on my list to do. Uh, we will probably do Headspace, which, um, if, to those in the, in, in the, in the indie game scene, you probably kind of know what this is going to be about, but this is actually a game is going to be about a Mori. It's like, I finished a series on a Mori. I, I watched the entire thing. He did all the secrets. He did all the endings. I read, I looked at it. I'm like, Wow. Uh, here, here's Notepad's review of Amori. Real fun. Wow. That's it? Like, <laughs> I, like, they kept building up to some of these bigger ideas in that, in that game, and they just didn't pay off as well as I was hoping for. Very Yume Nikki, but without any of the weird shit with Yume Nikki. I was hoping for a little bit more, and a little bit more uh, meat behind it. But... Pretty much the idea with Headspace is that it's going to be like, it's going to be a Mori, but a Mori actually has a really interesting combat system that I think, actually combat concept, I should say. Yo, know, and I, I like that idea of, oof, I like the idea of like manipulating emotions, you know, manipulating emotions to do bigger, to do different effects. Because in like a Mori, if you're sad, you just you you take reduced damage, but lose juice, which is pretty much your mana, like but lose mana effectively. But if you're angry, you do way more, you do way increased damage, but lower defense. Like you just get annihilated. And they all kind of play into one another, and it's I I think that would be fun to explore as a tabletop game. I actually looked around to see, like, are there any tabletop RPGs based on that? There aren't. At all. Which really surprised me. Uh, most likely, what was the other one? Uh, most likely, God Killing Sword. God Killing Swords will be on there, which is all about going to be a big, scary, uh, big, scary horror, horror nightmare. Um, which as you guess, is going to be for the Brazilians. There are specifically two Brazilians who want this game. I'm doing it for them. No one else. And where was the other one that was probably going to... Yeah. Actually, um... I should note that the website is updated fully. So, roughly speaking, these are what the games is going to be on the list. Things may change, of course. Uh, things may not change. Who knows? We live in Clown Town. So... Thank you all for watching. My name is Notepad Adon. I write games for fun. I will see you all possibly tomorrow. So tune in if that's what you're interested in or not. I we live in an egoist nightmare. Do as you please. And we if, if things go according to plan, probably tomorrow we'll be going over another one of these kind of streams of just deving a little bit just to make sure how everything works. We'll be going over the um well, this commission project that they've been wanting to do and how that's going to work. So we get to see the return of the the commission, commission sheets. So thank you all, and I will hopefully things go according to plan. So goodbye. Brazil's happy with your offering. Yeah, no, it's um, specifically a guy named Sleeps wants this game, and the entire idea is uh, Sleeps wants it very badly. Uh <laughs> 
this is literally all it's going to be. This one's going like out of all of these, out of these five, aces is going to be long. Like it's not going to be hard because I already have the system for it. It's going to be long to add in everything. This one's going to be weird because I need to kind of get into a different he headspace. This one's going to be weird, weird but short. There isn't actually that much to do. This one's just going to be complicated. Not hard, just complicated. God Killing Swords is going to be fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck, 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 hard. Like, <laughs> not, not the fun kind of hard, just, oh god, make it end tier hard, because... <laughs> the escalation of... That that concept is going to be nightmarish to deal with because it's go you're going to have to have a, a system in place for the ideal like I want to cut a I want to cut a planet in half kind of thing tier like the the power level is going to skyrocket over what is like you can really do naturally. And because of that, it's going to be very painful, we'll say. Very painful. So, again, if ever, anyone ever has any ideas, do not hesitate to send them into my Discord. Send them to, or if you ever have any concepts or any things that you'd like to see, send it to me. I'm always available. Just don't ping me endlessly about it, or I will find you. Sleep. But, 